Welcome to the Autofixation Podcast, a loud pedal production with your host Mark Farouk and Matt Powers. Welcome to the third episode of the Auto Fixation Podcast. Number three, baby. Number, number three. three. We finally made it to number three. Um, and other news, we're also, um, every platform you can think of, we're available. Nice. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you want to hear podcasts, we're available. More platforms for, for people not to find us. We're exactly. Very exactly. And if you very really, good. really don't want to find us, we're also, <laughs> they're also going to, uh, up on the website, uh, the loudpedalblog.com. That's my preferred route. That, I, the, that is the, mine as the, well. The podcast. I think everybody should hit that up. Totally. Uh, th- this is, after all, a production of the Loud Pedal. Uh, and we also, our social media, we po- host their Twitter, Instagram, the usual stuff. So nice. we're actually outside today. We are. We are. So if our listeners hear birds in the background, uh, yes. th- there's there's a reason. We're not, yes. we're not in an aviary. We've established that. We are just yeah. sitting outside <laughs> enjoying a little bit of sun and trying not to infect each other with, with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good for us. So if you're listening to this 50 years in the future, there was this thing called COVID. All right. So yeah, normally we we had uh, were able to a few other times before do this indoors. We're both uh, believe in science, so we're both vaccinated. Um, that and, is true. But now, who knows? I, I don't know what to do anymore. So that's, we're just outside now um, for other uh, and further spacing ourselves apart. Eventually, uh, powers will be on the, you know, 30 feet away. <laughs> I think we have that much cable we can make it work. Oh, your headphones may not. No, that, that, that was the limiting factor here. These mics are great. Like, we literally could be on the other side of the house, you know, on the side of the backyard. But <laughs> we need, yeah, to, the need to upgrade our headphones, I think. Yeah. I was also thinking we, another idea is we could. Both be in our cars and podcast separately and just run the cables between the windows. I don't know if that would raise any red flags or not. I don't know if people frown upon that. Um, Depends if we're driving or not, I think. You know, if we're stationary, it shouldn't be any issues. Or, but, uh, yeah, I was thinking driving. Yeah. <laughs> we have a real or finite self-driving. distance we can't like, go over if we're yeah, connected yeah. by cables. We could do some self-driving. <laughs> um, speaking of self-driving... There's a Tesla recall that just came out. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. Nearly half a million uh, Tesla Model 3s and S's uh, have been recalled. Uh, I guess one was the Model 3s, the rear camera issue could become damaged through the normal operation of the opening and closing of the trunk lid. It seems like the wire was rubbing and they, yeah. you know, it abraded the cable or something. Yeah. And it, could, it could fail, which so, would be unsafe. Yeah, so you wouldn't have your, your rear view camera. But probably the more um, uh, bigger issue is on the Model S, the front trunk could open without warning. <laughs> Or the frunk, the frunk, also known as the frunk, the frunk exactly. can open without warning. That would be a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends how fast you're driving. Yeah, but I know that would it. be a Monday morning wake up call <laughs> on the way to work. I wonder if the car can take over at that point, though. I think it would probably obscure the camera, you know, because I think the camera's in the, yeah. Uh, in yeah. the rear view mirror. Yeah, one of, so. yeah they hit one of the cameras is there. Yeah. Huh. I don't, I, know. I don't know, but it's it's pretty big. It was several hundred thousand. Um, so, so I was thinking, you know, I mean, to do a recall, the threshold for that is is pretty high because, I mean, I think a lot of times the manufacturers start by doing like the technical service bulletins and they basically encourage people to like fix it themselves mm-hmm. or take it to a dealer or a mechanic. But I guess in this instance, there's not really a lot of independent mechanics. There are no independent, officially sanctioned independent mechanics for Tesla. So yeah. the company's going to do it itself and they're willing to front the cost for that. And it did look like... A di- I don't want to give them too much credit, but it did look like from the reports that they were the ones that spotted the problem and alerted the feds, hey, we're going to do this recall. So kind of getting out in front of it. So Being good corporate citizens. Good for yeah, Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Departure from normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good for them. Um, so if you, if you have a Tesla, you should um, – I don't know how many – I don't know if anybody with a Tesla listens. Actually, I, I take that back. There is I do know is someone who has Tesla? Tesla who does listen, who are, who did listen at least one episode and they didn't vomit yet. So, <laughs> well, it, okay. So our advice for them is one: sell your Tesla. Sell Two, your Tesla. Yes. If you don't do that, then go get it repaired. Yes. Yeah. Step yeah. one: sell it. <laughs> Step two: if you can't sell it, is go get it repaired, <laughs> go get it. <laughs> and uh, then sell it. <laughs> yeah. 
It's just too bad. There's just some things you can't fix with a software update, no. I guess, is what we're finding. That is a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. It seems to be kind of the the where they want to go with it where, where they've been where they want to go we're going to fix everything with the software update and you can't do that in this case it reminds me a lot and i've other people is not my original idea i've heard other people describe it as with not just tesla but kind of new cars on the horizon electric cars that they're becoming like phones uh-huh. and that's a little scary because we only use phones for a couple of years, and then we they they end up in the ocean. Is where I think they end up eventually. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I, I flush mine down the toilet. Uh, really? Yeah. So oh. yeah. No. Oh. Okay. Very, very disposable. Oh <laughs> uh, well. No, so, but I think that's right. I mean, yeah. You you you, you replace those much more frequently. You replace replace the cars. So um, yeah, we'll have to see over time. How yeah, it's happens. really change. It's got, it, it, it it's really pushing a change in consumer behavior. I don't like, and I think a lot of other people aren't like. Look, I'm all for. I've leased a lot of cars. I'm all for flipping cars. But I'm also never thought that car just ended up in 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 a a junkyard after I was done. It was sold to someone else could enjoy it and use it or. You know, maybe they didn't enjoy it. Maybe they just needed a tool to get to, to work. But the idea of something as expensive and complicated as an automobile becoming a disposable consumer item. I know. Uh, Seems pretty cre- wasteful. Yeah, creeps me out a little bit. For sure. But maybe that's the future. Um, which raises another issue we'll talk about in the future about this subscription stuff. Oh, yeah. Which got really popular. I hear like Volvo still working on it. I but, think that's right. That's right. But some of the the fanfare about some of it, Porsche had one, maybe still does. I don't think the price point's that great, Mark. I mean, the, yeah, I can't say I look yeah. that deeply, but like you know, it, I think like a Volvo, you know, was nine hundred dollars to rent or lease. I don't know what it is. What, yeah, what, what do you subscribe, call it? Subscribe. You know, subscribe. To yeah, like a sort of like mid tier car. It's expensive, you know. It's, yeah. I mean, okay, you know, I guess if you factor in your cost of insurance and and whatever else it would be, you know, the car payment or the lease payment or something, you know, maybe it comes out of wash. Do they they cover? Uh, well, yeah, the usually cover the, it's the insurance. Um, yeah, insurance, but not not gas, so not fuel. Should, yeah, Ma- maintenance and insurance. Yeah, basically. maintenance and insurance. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I don't know either. And I bet we'll do a deep dive. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get our analytical minds. Yes, absolutely. We will. We'll get out some spreadsheets out of this issue. <laughs> yeah. So in a future episode, we're we're gonna come back and look at this subscription stuff. You want to build a spreadsheet? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do yeah. That. Did you say you want to build a spreadsheet? <laughs> like I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I guess so. I can do that. But no, I'm thinking there's uh, maybe we can reach out to some folks that know more about this or, or have some opinions. But the subscription model, something been talked about a lot. Automakers were pushing it. Seems to have died down a little bit, but uh, we should look at it. How is that still a thing? Well, it kind of reminds me of, you know, how uh, TNC is. We're going to replace uh, car ownership, right? I mean, all the young millennials are going to have Ubers and Lyfts, and they're not going to need a car and stuff. And I think now, you know, with COVID and last yeah. few years, I think people are like, shit, I don't want to be in the car with somebody else all the time. Yeah. So maybe I do might need my own vehicle. You Imagine know? that. The, yeah, right. The, the, the personal bubble still has some value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so moving on from that, this is uh, funny. Our last episode, we talked about um, that Google Maps had misled people during a blizzard. Wait, wait, I got to stop you for a second because we didn't talk about it. We broke that story. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this podcast, I'm sorry, we, broke, we did. We broke, broke that, that story. story. <laughs> uh, I think, though, the angle we broke is that uh, people are stupid. <laughs> um, Blindly following their GPS yes. into um, In, closed roads. Into yeah, storms. closed roads. Um so the story even blew up even further. A few days after we covered it in our last episode, it made it all the way to the New York Times. I can't believe we get influenced the Times. That's, that's, I, it's, that's, that's amazing. I, I, in our second episode, I know, right? already making an impact <laughs> all the way to the New York Times. Um, so if you're looking for the article, it, it was called Snow Closed the Highways, GPS Mapped a Harrowing Detour in the Sierra Nevada. Okay, <laughs> he's writing a movie trailer copy. Um, Our listeners missed your face. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it was um, some of the same people we had pointed out from the Bay Area that had it felt found themselves outraged, outraged by Google Maps, and so outraged they went to Twitter, where mm-hmm. everyone goes these mm-hmm. days when they're outraged mm-hmm. to point out. 
how Google was misleading people. And I think our advice then and our advice continues to be if you're driving into those sorts of conditions, you should have your route kind of planned out and know the road conditions. Completely. Caltrans. I know. They do that right, letting you know what's there. CHP is all over social media. I was thinking the other day, we should try to get someone from CHP on here to talk about how to be prepared. Yep. And see if they'll tell us like some of the dumbest things they've seen. That's a good during idea. These conditions. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Then we could I, ambush them also on some yes. questions. You know, yeah. You know, pro drivers. But yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I'm with you, Mark. I'm with you. But actually, what's funny on that story, man, I have to say, I don't know if you caught this, but the main protagonist of it was was an editor for the time. So, you know, I think she was the one who was driving <laughs> through the snowstorm. <laughs> and it was, so I thought this was kind of, I mean, I don't want to question the veracity of her Go story, ahead. right? Do I it. mean, who, who am I do to it. do that? But like, Double down. she was <laughs> like going to visit an ailing parent in Reno or something. She just like had to go. And it just reminded me of like, you know, how many like notes did I forge in high school when I was like late to class? that were like about an ailing parent. I think my grandma probably died like 50 times when I was in high school. That's why I was constantly late. It's just like, it's so perfect for this story that she had to be on the road to visit an ailing parent and then the the the, the terrible tech companies led her astray. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. It just seems a little bit overwrought. But, you know, that being said, we wish her the best. It we wish like her the, the best. The situation was okay in the end. Imagine on, the story. Folks, imagine the story of this ailing relative had passed away. Oh my God. Outright. Rage. There'd probably be legislation. But I think both, there would both be. Both of us having, you know, background legislation. It probably I, would be. We, I, I think some, I mean, I, I would certainly I would think you could capitalize on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty would. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be a clear connection to connect uh, the, the death of this lady had it happened to Google Maps. <laughs> totally. Somehow leading you on a totally. side road. Totally. Totally. Ugh. So anyway, so already making an impact. Uh, that was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a fun read. But again, please, if you're driving in the snows, uh, snow, please be prepared and take precautions and whatnot. So, you know, moving on, Mark, I want to I want to talk a little bit about something that happened here um, in in my front yard. I mean, we're in my backyard now. Yeah, and um, I live in Sacramento, and out front we have a park. It's a nice park, and every New Year's Day, there's a um, I think it's basically statewide, Northern California. I mean, there's a lot of different people from the various like low rider mm-hmm. organizations or hot rods. You know, they they come here in the front and they barbecue and they show off their cars. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a big thing. I mean, it's, I know, thousands of people here. Wow, no, nice people had some nice conversations. I was getting on my my bike and mm-hmm. somebody driving a Hayabusa challenged me to a race. So it was kind of oh. kind, kind of <laughs> kind of interesting. The friendly friendly people, you know. But I, I have to say, man, I don't I don't get low rider. So quick note, quick note. Powers is about to crap all over <laughs> low rider culture. I'm I a little concerned it. for our like, security uh, at this point. Come on. Who takes like a $3,000 car and puts like a $20,000 suspension on it? Now, full disclosure, I have no idea how much these systems cost, but they're not They're not they're cheap. They're not cheap. Right? No, it's not cheap. It's just uh, like, okay, and then, and then who are their like – wives or spouses or partners that allow them to do this uh, that, right i mean like that's like, a good nah, question nah, honey i'm gonna buy this really shitty car <laughs> that's like 30 years old and i'm gonna plow a crap ton of money into it and for what like they don't even like drive that well you know i mean they, they jump up and down which is kind of cool and then okay then the other question that i have is it like required that you wear Raiders gear when you own those cars. <laughs> like, I mean, I've never seen so much Raiders paraphernalia as I saw. I, saw, I, 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 I'm, that, I'm, that I'm concerned for your safety powers at this point. I don't know if I can jump but, in on this one. <laughs> do you think like when you sell one of those, you transfer all your Raiders <laughs> like hats and jerseys to the, to the new owner? Or are yeah, you like a, compelled to go out and buy that There's a special DMV form. Is <laughs> A checkbox that you're transferring ownership of your Raiders paraphernalia to the next subsequent owner. I don't know. It uh, makes no. It makes no sense to me, man. I mean, like, 
it's funny because like they, I've shown them to the kids and the kids are, yeah, they, they think it's cool and they like they're like you know really impressed by the cars up on three wheels and they jump and stuff and I think it's cool too I just don't understand I don't understand it it's like nothing I would never do that but you know yeah yeah I don't know yeah well I've encountered uh, in, in several cases that it becomes a family affair going back to the issue of how is a you know how's the spouse like allowing this to happen uh, I've encountered a lot of couples that are into this. Um, you know, it, that's great. But you know, I, but I hear are, are you, you a secret uh, low rider? Uh, <laughs> you got you some, know, I want to confess something. Here I, to me? I, you know, I appreciate. I like when it's done well and done right. Like if it's like you know, and like an Impala low rider always tugs at my heart. Okay. Okay. Um, but when I see like a Caprice. <laughs> uh, where you're right, more money's been spent on suspension and tires than the car is worth. I, I start to get a little concerned. Um, but also, you know, there's a part of me that also understands the, you know, that drive people have to do something automotive, to have a project. To I don't. I feel like we're just if you're a, if you're a gearhead, you just have this gene that drives you just throw money away. I mean, you're throwing it into a project, right? But you're really, it's never going to be finished. Yep. A lot of people end up having to sell them yep. way less money than they put into them. Though now with the car market, maybe it's not the case, but typically that's been the case. A lot of people having to lie to their spouses about how much money they've spent. <laughs> um, now, this is a very generous perspective. I, am, I admire this more. I mean, I, you're, you're, trying you're, 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 turning, trying you're turning me a little bit because yeah, I guess you're right. There are some commonalities among. Now, I will tell you where it really, I thought it, the most entertaining time I've seen a low rider, it wasn't really a show but it kind of was so uh, two years ago during monterey car week it was fr it was a friday night we were in downtown monterey we just finished seeing like all the exotic cars they have they have this exotics on broadway show so you're talking you know six and seven figure cars easily in this show and you know very elitist type personalities and the cars that go with it and then in the middle of all this there had been like a low rider and hot rod show like a few miles away and they started cruising through downtown Monterey. It was very refreshing <laughs> because it was like so much more down to earth yeah, and right. real right. Uh, than this other stuff. And there was some really cool stuff. Like I, I, what I really like is I like what people do to some of the old trucks, like the old Ford trucks and stuff where they, you know, bag them and yep. put blowers on them and, and the whole thing. I like that sort of thing, but... I, I get your point that people sometimes take this like way too far. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it's to me for me it's just the like it just doesn't it just fundamentally doesn't make any sense <laughs> to buy like a really cheap shitty car. You know what it is and it, put like, a lot of money. But I guess your point about like if it's a it's, you know it's a sort of classic Impala or it's yeah. something that's like got some residual value. Okay, fine. But I think for yeah for me it's really just that like value proposition of just like <laughs> dumping so much money into something that's so clearly not worth that much money well you know a good one is a good one and a bad one is so bad yeah. <laughs> i think that's maybe that's the issue there's no in between like the fall off is just like dramatic it's like there you have these you know a place to go see like the the like cream of the crop is and i don't even know if they're doing it this year i have to double check but uh the sacramento auto rama is like a big hot rod show in sacramento at uh cal expo the, yeah okay yeah okay, okay. and they have a, a pavilion of low riders but it, i mean the paint jobs on some of sure. these probably cost more than my audi or your polestar i mean it just unbelievably Hand done mm -hmm. pinstriping and fleck paint. And I mean, those Raiders logos don't come cheap. That's you, right. <laughs> you're That's painting right. them on. <laughs> now, I think the last thing I want to say on this more before we move on mm -hmm. is that the low riders aside, what I especially appreciated was the donuts that happened at the, at the intersection. <laughs> I was out there with my neighbor, right? And he was like, hey, there's somebody like doing a little side show. And he's like, man, this guy's like a donut professional. <laughs> it's, it's true. He just like kept it swinging. You know, it's, it's it, was, it was impressive. <laughs> yeah, they should be careful. There's actually new laws in the books about side shows that came into effect in January. Summary executions? or I believe it's pretty close. Pretty close. I think the stockade 
is the punishment <laughs> for that. No, I think like it, uh, a longer term of having your car impounded yeah. is potentially the issue. And I, I, I I'm sorry, just, I don't have a problem know, with it. I know, I know. Sorry, I know. you know, especially if you do it on the freeway. I, did, I mean, you do it here in a residential neighborhood. And there's people walking around. Though you know, I will tell changes. you a funny story that happened in December. It wasn't near New Year's. It was like early December. I, we got home. Me, wife and the kids and I, we get home. It was pretty late. I, I don't even remember where, where we'd been. But we get home. It's like 10, 1030. I live close to an intersection. And as we're walking through the door, this jerk in an infinity is trying to do donuts in the intersection <laughs> and is failing miserably. <laughs> he starts to do the donut and he can't get the tail of the car whipped around. And I'm getting, like, my children see me visibly getting, like, very upset with this person. And I'm trying to decide, what am I going to do? Like, by the time I call anybody, the police, yeah, right, nobody's right. going to show up. Right. So I just yelled out, you suck, as loud as I could. <laughs> and my kids looked at me and I said, I'm more mad that he can't do a donut <laughs> than he's trying to do a he's donut on our street. At least if you're going to interrupt my evening, do <laughs> a worth proper it. donut. <laughs> Entertain me, damn it. Do you think he was your neighbor, one of your neighbors, or did he just like rock? He's like he just like driving through the neighborhood. He's like, I think he's driving through the neighborhood. Do a donut here. Yeah, yeah why I not? think because the across the kind of one of the corners is an empty lot, so maybe he felt there was more space. But honestly, you could have given this guy all the space in the world. He couldn't have accomplished <laughs> I mean, this. When I was a kid, we used to do them behind, like, you know, the industrial, like, like a supermarket late in the evening. Yeah, like in, yeah. In the industrial area, like, the, yeah. you know, the, the truck uh, the truck places. So what do they call Like the warehouses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was actually thinking, I don't know if you ever did this. If you ever had a front-wheel drive car, you could um, steal the fast food trays from the fast food restaurants and put them under the oh. um, under, the, under under the rear tires with the handbrake up. Oh. And shit, <laughs> the car will whip donuts. Wow, I did on, not thought on, of that. On fast food trays. I got to see this. And there's actually a next level, too, where you, there for a while, I don't know if they still do them. They used to have these, like, <laughs> plastic um, plastic pallets at the supermarkets. Like, you know, instead of, like, a, a, one of those wooden pallets yeah, like I know shipping pallets. About. you yeah, have like yeah, a plastic yeah. pallet yeah. they've got these sort of like um, these sort of like humps in them and you can get your wheels into those humps same thing pull your e-brake oh. it's a lot more durable than the fast food <laughs> fast food tray so you know for yeah. all of our listeners out there that want to know how they can try doing donuts in a front wheel drive car that there you the, go. That is the way. All right. That is the way. And please send us pictures if you. Yes, if you, pictures if you, oh, or yes, video. If you, if you do that. Absolutely. Mark will definitely post that. I would definitely. I want to identify you. I, I'll remove any personal <laughs> identifiable information, but we definitely want to see that. We'll leave their social security numbers out there. But well, that just yeah, makes me lament the death of plastic <laughs> now that you mentioned that. <laughs> uh, well, moving on from that, I just. Um, Interesting story. We talked about this before in our recent car buying experiences, you know, that this car market is nuts. Um, and so, you know, it, it's people ask, oh, should I buy a car now? The resounding answer is no. When should I buy a car? I don't really know. Couldn't tell you. Is it going to get better? There's mixed answers to that. Well, maybe there might be, but they just saw an article that kind of backs up some things I had been thinking. There was an article in um, Axios about that supply chain disruptions are actually causing a, a, a redesign of the car buying selling model. Changing consumer behavior. Yeah. So we, so evidently, and I had not thought about this, but the European model of selling cars is much more dictated toward ordering what you want generally with yes. sort of the mid to higher end cars commuter type cars a little less so but with your mid-range your higher end european cars it's it's really built on an on an order system i did whenever we have european friends or family come to visit i'm always asked questions about how in the hell does this business model work of having all this inventory sitting at these dealer locations yeah and i don't really have a great answer and now it turns out in this story it doesn't really work. That, yeah, it that doesn't. Well, does it? Yeah. No, because if, if you read the story, and it's something we've been we've been talking uh, amongst ourselves for a while, is just the the cost for automakers and dealers to keep inventory, and then something I I had never really thought about too much is if you're an automaker, you have to guess what people want 
and supply that variety of, of models, right. colors, That's right. accessories, and supply those to dealers. And dealers have to hope that they've made the right call on this is the inventory we need for our population. Yep. Um, and so this, it looks like the future. So if you're out there, you're thinking about the, the days of going to the lot and finding what you want that day is, is I, I think it's changed significantly. And, and I think you're better off. And I've been advocating for this just with the price of cars. You're going to pay the same. You might even save money. Just order it. Yep. Get exactly what you want. Yep. Of course, I violated my own rule. I ended up not ordering. <laughs> but I, I also kind of, when I recently got my car, it just happened to fit everything I was exactly looking for. Just like this, just but everything matched. I think, though, Mark, I mean, you're probably more strategic in what you buy. You've got you got a plan of what you're going to buy. I have buy. spreadsheets. Yeah, right? I have spreadsheets. You knew. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You had a you had an A three or sorry an A four excuse me an A four, mm-hmm. then you bought an SQ five. Mm-hmm. Now you bought an SQ seven, and I think when you bought each of those cars, you probably had an idea what your next car was gonna I, look like. Or yeah, be I rusty, was thinking. Right? Yeah, so a few yeah. years out. Yeah, I think you're probably the exception rather than your rule. I think a lot of people are pushed into buying a car because their current car. You know, takes a shit and doesn't work, or it's, you know, they got that's some, a good point. Got that's some a good issues. Point. So, you know, maybe that's part of it. You know, maybe Americans are just a little bit more impulsive. Yeah, they'd like having well, that's that. That's what the article implies. That, yeah, okay, that we're just go. an impulsive culture, but we were not patient with these things. And so, you know, it's going to require a little bit more, more, more planning. You know, you recognize, yeah. like, okay, yeah, my car's, yeah. my car is, you know, on its way out, and <laughs> I should start planning for its replacement. Yeah. You know, rather than waiting until it doesn't run anymore or it's got some, you know, real yeah. issue, and then just better to trade it in at that point. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be more deliberate, I think. Yeah. Well, interesting because you got the the Polestar, which is an EV, and I noticed another thing. This article is like, for example, Ford for the Mustang Mach-E has built that around an order and delivery model. And according to this article, they're really using that as a test case for the future of selling all their cars. Interesting. And it also mentioned uh, Polestar in particular had started out wanting to only do an order model, but then kind of made it a hybrid because of this impulsivity of American buyers. So they typically at their dealerships keep five to seven various models available in any given time and of course do have the order uh, base model so it, it's i think for the future of evs or or whatever technology comes in the future that's kind of what's going to happen you're going to need to for the most part order it to get exactly what you want uh, you know yeah, totally. <laughs> Actually, it just reminds me that I think uh, GM is perhaps taking it a little bit to the extreme with their new um, their new uh, electric truck. Uh, we were texting about this. Mm. That they're like taking reservations. Not really. This isn't ordering, <laughs> but this is like taking reservations like two and a half years out or something. I, I think they've they've completely missed the mark on on, yeah. their, on their rollout. But I think to your point, like you know, you're which, gonna, you have to, you have to reserve and then you're going to have to uh, place, yeah. play, place in two and a half order. years. Which COVID variant will we will we be at? <laughs> at that point <laughs> Z or you know something yeah. I don't know I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot about the Greek I mean, Greek who, alphabet that's insane to roll that out two and a half years before delivery starts I mean yeah they are so far behind the curve yeah and I wonder if it's related to they can't get chips for what they're building now and they're like oh well we're not going to have chips yep. this far in the future Meanwhile, Ford with the F one fifty is going to be out there in front of them. That Rivian, that, yeah, the Rivian. Both those are cool. Both those are cool. I am and, super. And I, I really like the Rivian. Me too. And uh, there was one. Speaking of this, this Blizzard we talked about before on social media. There, I I wasn't sure if it was like Rivian was testing one or it was just someone was up there. But someone drove their Rivian through this Blizzard. It's a good plug for Rivian. Yep, and we're doing donuts in a parking lot. Speaking of donuts, <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> So <laughs> that's what we do here. We tie everything together. Yeah, that's it. Bring it all that's, together. That's it. It's all connected. Uh, so we wanted to. Uh, uh, Powers and I have talked. We've talked a lot about Formula One. We've talked about other racing series before. And so, what uh, Powers had approached me recently before we even started our first podcast about uh, 
trying to convince him. What else should I watch, Mark? What else should I mean, I don't mind owning this. I'm kind of an elitist, and I like my (laughs) F1. It is the pinnacle of motorsport. Absolutely. And and I've probably, I used to watch like the Indy Indy 500 when Mm -hmm, I was a kid. mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. my dad was into that. So, you know, that that, that would be fun. But like, something about cars driving in left, only on letting left turns yeah, on Oval. Yeah. Nah, I don't, nah, know. Don't, I, I, don't know. I don't know if that's the pinnacle of motorsports. So I know you follow some of the other, the mm-hmm. other you know, motor racing circuits yeah. and things like that. So I, I said to you, Mark, like, well, what should I, what am I missing out on? What, yeah. should, what should I be watching? Yeah, so absolutely. I, I, I want your suggestions, man. Yeah. So I've got one here that I think will check the boxes, not just for a North American series, but is connected to Europe as well. So, And there's some crossover appeal. Uh, to this because you have some drivers that do both some okay. manufacturers that that okay. also uh, do both uh, and so I was talking about the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship okay. which is that's a mouthful it is a mouthful I also like simple things so <laughs> simple I, thing. you know, F1, F1 I can keep them IMSA <laughs> well IMSA's always had the, uh, because they always put the title sponsor in the name it's WeatherTech and they spend a lot of big money yes, to be do. the title sponsor yes they do so they IMSA, should sponsor us I mean, we're giving they a plug should. here. You know. They should. Come on. They should. Weather I tech, actually have listening. some WeatherTech stuff. Not going to say what it is. is it, yeah, don't say if it's good or not because they have to pay That's us That's right. They have to pay us good. first. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> not saying a word. <laughs> so the, I, I'll just call it IMSA for short at this point. Um, so IMSA originally st- – st- it's been a lot of different things over, over the decades. At one point, it was known as the American Le Mans series. So it was an American – equivalent series to the European Le Mans, 24 Hours of Mm -hmm. Le Mans, because you have a lot of teams that do both. Uh, Then that's still the case. Many of the teams that race in IMSA uh, will race at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, I've uh, personally... Uh, as well as our uh, the Loud Pedals co-founder uh, Andrew, who hopefully is listening and and will be on a future episode. I just talked nice. to him the other night. Nice, he likes uh, what we're doing. Yeah, he is. He's Good. a big fan now. <laughs> <laughs> we have one fan. I think he only gave us one star review though. Um, <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we uh, it's for the Loud Pedal. We've covered at um, both Sonoma Raceway and Laguna Seca Raceway for it feels like a long time, but I think at least the last decade for the blog but even longer just going as a spectator to see IMSA races and it's really one of the closest ways that someone here can see cars that either race at the 24 hours of Le Mans or look like those that will and and one of the most exciting things is uh, five classes of cars racing at the same time I was just going to ask so yeah so what are yeah. what, what am what am I going to be watching Do yeah you know? So you're going to be seeing it's it's basically five races in one going on at the same time. So you're going to have prototype. Sounds complicated. <laughs> it could be, but the good thing, even if you don't know what's going on, there's always action on track. Okay. And so you have the top two categories are prototype race cars that look like the prototypes you see at the 24 Hours of Le Mans with uh, Mazda, Acura. Uh, Cadillac hmm. has a, has a what's known as a, a DPI car. They call them Daytona Prototype International. Or I, I think I've got the acronym right. Um, and and so those are are the the top level. And then the next categories are all GT related. So you have Porsche 911 RSR, uh, Mercedes GT, Corvette, uh, uh, um, Acura, BMW, like kind of all the Ferrari, Lamborghini, cool. uh, GT cars that look like things like Lamborghini Huracans, yep. you know, uh, mm-hmm. the GT3 versions that are racing. So they look like cars you would see cool. out on the street and all. Ra- and and that and I will say that those classes are super competitive. Um, and also, uh, they are not. Uh, IMSA has not gone the way of F1 with penalizing every single move that occurs on track. So it it is often, uh, especially in the GT field, that the chrome horn will be used frequently <laughs> <laughs> against each other. And and so and they, I think they're carbon fiber these days. They are these oh, yeah. days. Yeah, the carbon fiber horn just doesn't have the same no, ring no, to no, it. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, and also the races are their endurance races. So typically their sprint races okay. typically are two and a half three hours long, 
And they have longer four, six, 12 hour races. Actually, the first race of the season is coming up is the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. They use the road course of the Daytona racetrack. Cool. Uh, that's coming up on January 28th and 31st. Oh, I see that. Yeah, so that's your homework assignment. There we go. Yeah. All right. You okay. get to watch okay. that. Former Deal. F1 drivers yeah. racing that. Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah. Kevin uh, Magnuson. Ah. Kamui Kobayashi. Ah, Kobayashi. Robert ah. Kubi- Kubica or Kubica? Kubica. Kubica. Robert uh-huh. Kubica. Uh-huh. And then several IndyCar drivers and Indy 500 uh, winners yeah. racing that as well. And so it, it's it's a very exciting series. Uh, a lot of of big manufacturers use it to test. A lot of the things that we see on the road today, which is the same for Formula One, a lot of the developments of the racetrack end up in road cars, but it's the same for cars in, in, a, in, in the IMSA series. A lot of the developments that that you see as far as fuel economy mm-hmm. uh, are developed in these endurance races because if you can do one less pit stop than your opponent to refuel, that's a big advantage. It makes a huge advantage, and so I would say to anyone out there, if you haven't tuned in to the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, give that a shot. It's also they're going to be racing later this later this year. I think September at Laguna Seca Raceway. We've got it. If you go on the loudpedalblog.com and search IMSA, you'll see all the articles we've done about it, the photos, video. It's it's just a great, it's just a great fun experience. Cool. All right, I'm gonna check it out, and then our next episode will yeah, let's we'll, talk, let, we'll, we'll discuss it. Yeah, let's and, talk about it, analyze it, <laughs> deep deep dive <laughs> deep, analysis deep, 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 that you can what, only find here. What we're known for, really. what we are known exactly. For. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's um, and that'll be a good thing. It's a good. It's also a good bridge until the Formula One season starts back in March. That's it. I know we get back to that. Cool. So, cool. Uh, so, on to the uh, off ramp. The off ramp. We ramp up the off ramp. So I'll bring up. Um, I bring up one, and I don't know. So we've t- spent a lot of time talking about Formula One, Mercedes. So there's a story that, uh, and, and this part's true. So Bose, the maker of overpriced, I mean high quality uh, <laughs> audio goods, and you, are, we shouldn't plug these brands, but you are wearing Bose. I, aren't you? I, I, I might no, actually. I think these are Sony. Are these Sony? I think these are Sony. Much but, better. But they probably copy <laughs> Bose technology. Um, so Bose was a was a sponsor of Mercedes, and they are no longer a sponsor. Why? I, why is that? What are you What are you thinking? Well, there's some thought that it may be from the constant uh, destruction of headphones by Toto Wolf during his <laughs> temper tantrums that Bose has not wanted uh, their logo associated with his outburst. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I, seems plausible to me. You know, yeah. So. I think they should just make a better quality headphone that's indestructible, and then it'd be, be a good, good ad. Be a good plug. That would be for them. That you would know, be going the opposite direction. That would be. They're like taking their toys and going home because they don't like how <laughs> <laughs> their, their thing is, their product has been treated. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like it. Now there are some good videos online of Toto smashing his his headphones. Oh yeah, Toto's oh, like yeah. a one man you know social media content producer. It's amazing. He is. Like, Guy, he he doesn't know. understand his power. No. He really doesn't. No, no. And damn, he looks good in a tight shirt, too. <laughs> okay, I don't know where you're going with that. Maybe okay, we should I'm move going, on. What, what, going, what do you I'm have on go, the on ramp? I don't know how much for you, Mark. But okay. What I got for you is, for our listeners, apologies, you can't see this, but this is an Alpha, it's called. This is an Alpha Motors station wagon. And no. I guess this is a this is a new EV manufacturer. And I encourage all of our listeners to go take a look at this thing. So this is not Alpha Romeo. This is a no. Alpha just known as Alpha. Alpha Motors. And this thing is freaking cool. The now the the, the article that I'm looking at is a Jalopnik article <laughs> questioning whether this thing's actually ever gonna be made. <laughs> so you know full disclosure maybe it doesn't come to market. But that thing is cool. To me it looks a little bit like one of these British TVRs. I don't know if you've ever yeah, seen this. Yeah, yeah I have from from the back kind of looks a little bit mm-hmm. like that they are really cool little like two-door sports that's cars very but, cool but this and it has a little like delorean in it and it's cool like the marketing videos have a have a, have a surfboard on top lancia so, yeah yeah all, or, exactly that the front end you're sh- i see in the photo there 
It definitely has that look. So I think if there's anybody from Alpha Motors that wants to um, ensure that their brand is seen as a legitimate brand, they should uh, invite us to drive one of these things. And we'll, I agree we'll, 100%. We will review it. And sponsor us as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are for sale. You give us money. We will tell people it's great. <laughs> so it, it, Just by one question, when is this thing going to be in production? <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> yeah. I think we all got our answer. Sometime in the future, but that won't, that will not hold them back, I'm sure, from having a multi billion dollar market valuation oh. on, on, the st- on the stock market. Absolutely. This thing will go public. Absolutely. You know, investors will rush to it. I'll have to, to sell some of my NFTs to afford this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's all I got, brother. Nice. Well, that's very cool. Well, I think that's, uh, I think it's it. Yeah. For us. All right. I think we've taken enough time. Um, well, thanks, everyone. Matt, good to see you as always. Good to and see you, um, until next time. time. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.